Sometimes some people feel like they're missing out. Sometimes some people feel like someone else is so unbelievably successful. And, you know, the universe doesn't like me. Because I'm not that person. I'm not, just not successful. And they are the ones who really have got self-esteem issues. Because they're looking for external validation. You know, oh, I didn't make my sports team that I tried out for. And now my self-esteem has been stomped on and uh, I'm not a worthwhile person. Somebody else at work got the promotion. I'm smarter than that other person, but for some reason they gave it to this other person. Now I feel like... Um, Sometimes people who have really, really bad self-esteem become unbelievably brutal bullies. And then the question, you know, if you could put somebody like this in counseling, why are you being such a horrible person? And their answer is they don't want to face themselves. They don't want to look at themselves in the mirror and say, inside, somewhere in me, there, I don't know what it is. I don't want to look inside of me to see what it is. No, it's not a trauma, because that's sort of the normal thing people say. It's a trauma. This person was traumatized somewhere when they were young, and that needs healing, and then you heal that, and they'll stop being a bully. No, 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 no. That's a very simple thing you would see on TV or in a movie. The person who has bad self-esteem has bad self-esteem because they are not what they want to be. 
And what they want to be is a wannabe. In other words, they constantly look to see who's the biggest celebrity around. I want to be that one. It's not like I want to be like that one. They want to be that one. And you can't be someone else because you are you. But this kind of a person uh, has these issues. Why well, I just want to be that other person. I want to be this movie star. You know, it's not fair for that I'm not the movie star and I'm in this body when I should be in that movie star's body. Or whoever it is that they feel they ought to be. Somebody else. That's who I ought to be. And seeing as I can't be that, I'm going to take it out on that person. That's who they go and attack. They go and attack the person that they really want to be. It's childish. But it still happens. And the person who has this issue is never going to get through to themselves. That, you know, you're you. And, you know, find out what's in you that wants to come out. Other than this crazy behavior. Where you're going to go and to the ends of the earth to become this other person. But you're not the other person. I don't have anything much else to tell you. These people that really want to be the movie star, they really want to be someone that they're not, have got self-esteem issues. In search of something to do with themselves, maybe they're going to get plastic surgery to look like the person that they want to be. The self-esteem issue is I'm not what I want to be because I'm not getting whatever it is that I want if I was that other person. That other person's got what I want. If I was them, I'd have everything. So I've just got to get into their body and become the personality inside of that body 
And I have to have that personality, because if it's a movie star, not only do I have to have the body, but I have to have the acting ability. And my self-esteem has gone down the toilet because I haven't figured out a way to do it. And I just don't want to be me. In search of something else to tell you, I've got Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Martinez, the shit demon, who is uh, encouraging me to keep talking. That's why my body keeps doing herky-jerky, because the shit demon is moving my body. The shit demon wants to be me. It's an extreme form of projection. The shit demon projects its own energy into my body and makes it do herky-jerky. The shit demon is there first thing in the morning when I wake up and basically all night. In other words, from the time I wake up for 24 hours, that shit demon, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Martinez, is there. Not focusing on its own life, and, you know, following its own path, it has a huge ego. And the ego of Jesus is always about, I want to be me. And never being able to be me, it gets more and more frustrated. And it just keeps coming back day after day trying out a new way, but it's the same old way, and it doesn't work. And he'll never say, um, this is stupid. Jesus will never say that, because he's been doing it for years. And, you know, he's a spirit, so, you know, he's not even a, in a living body. He has this self-esteem from past time when he did have a body so you're basically looking at a, a spirit that has self-esteem issues that were never resolved when it was alive and to resolve these issues uh, this spirit is needing somebody to come and give it a hand. So it found some other spirits to give it a hand. And this team of spirits comes and decides, well, if we can't be you, this body-mind, then we're going to haunt you. And, you know, it's kind of a purposeless thing because haunting someone that you want to be doesn't make you be. It makes you a monster. And the same problem every day not realizing it's self-esteem issue 
you're not happy with who you are. So you got to look outside of you for something that you could be instead of you. And that is the story of the spirits of planet Earth. Those are the discarnate spirits that don't have a body, but they still have a consciousness. And these particular spirits are pretty much incredibly wise to the fact that this is their problem. Even so, they don't want to fix their problem. They don't want to fix their problem because prolonging their terrorizing of another person gives them an ego boost. Their ego themselves is happy being a monster. The ego is about a seven-year-old child playing monster games. And these spirits that are discarnate on planet Earth can be maybe a thousand years old. Or maybe 600 years old, or maybe seven years old. It's not really known how long these spirits have been not in a physical body. But generally speaking, they know English and they know tricks about how to monster people. So they had to be around for a long time to learn the things that they have learned. And if they're haunting this body mind, then it's quite likely that there are others out there that are haunting you, perhaps the viewer of this. So do you want to build up the self-esteem of the discarnate spirits that are monstering you? No. How are you going to boost the self-esteem of a monster? The spirits are not needing you to tell them, oh, you know, you're a worthwhile monster. The spirits need to get inside of themselves and um, get themselves woken up because they're pretty much sleepwalking, which means they're not listening to logic they're listening to in search of a better word instinct how would a monster act and then they start acting like a monster and they keep it up for so long that they are the monster The number of discarnate spirits on planet Earth is, can't really say, but it's probably in the order of, well, if there's seven and a half, eight billion humans on the planet, I don't know. How many humans, when they die, become discarnate uh, humans? I don't know. 10%? 20%?
If it's 10%, that would be a billion discarnate humans. Humans without bodies that are still earthbound ghosts. Why would there be 10%? Why not 1%? Whatever number you want to pick. It's just that I've had people do research into this. And it seems like pretty much every human has got discarnate entities that are bothering them in one way or another. Could be hundreds, thousands attaching themselves to you. Sometimes these kind of researchers say, well, it's because they are able to get into you because you've had past life issues where you didn't deal very well with the death of your wife or you had a past life where you perhaps were a suicide This is what these researchers say. They get their information from a kit. In other words, you can take a course and get a bunch of books that explain this particular theory. And then what they do is they use a pendulum and a card that they lay out on a table. And the pendulum will go to where on the card the particular issue is. Is it true? People believe in psychics. Even people who are skeptical, skeptical of psychics believe in psychics. Why? Mostly because either they want to believe in psychics because their life is boring and they want to know that there's something, some mystery that they can investigate and pretend to be very skeptical and like, like no, they're just saying, no, it's just stupid. But these people love psychic stuff. They love UFO stuff. They love any kind of mystery novels, mystery movies. They like, they've just got a curious mind. So those people, and then the other kind of people are the people who have had weird ex. They've had these experiences that they can't explain, so they want to go to paranormal explanations. Does the pendulum give you an answer? It does. Does a Ouija board give you answers? It can. With the Ouija board, you're supposed to play with at least two people with their hands on the Ouija board indicator. Maybe it's just two. I don't know what happened if you would get three little children with little hands on the pointer. And then, you know, the pointer moves and you know you're not moving it. And you're thinking, oh, that person across from me, they're moving it. And if there's three of you, then you're never sure. Which one of you is pushing this indicator? Is there always one person who is pushing it? And if there is one person that's pushing it towards maybe the letter R, if they're going to spell out something, that person's got to think to themselves, 
What got into my head that made me want to push the indicator to the letter R? Why not a Q or an X? It wanted me to go to R. Is it a spirit that's coming through me that wants to use the pointer to go to R? So, you know, the children's minds start spinning. What's really going on with the Ouija board? Some people can see these ghostly things. They've got second sight. They testify they can see these things. Maybe you can't. I have second sight. I can see it. This has been another one of Rumpelstiltskin's stories for boys and girls. Campfire stories, ghost stories, and stories for girls and boys. If you enjoy these kind of stories, we've made a number of them. You can just search for stories for boys and girls, etc. And see if I come up. Rumpelstiltskin is an imp. What's an imp? One of these monsters that I'm talking about.